Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. I am Bobby Wibuo, one of the English ministry pastor of Sarang Nanum Community Church. I'm glad to join you again here in this program. And before we start, I would like to ask you to join me in the word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this evening. We are grateful for your grace, your mercy, your love, all that you have done in our life. Father, speak to us tonight as we are ready to listen to your words. We know that you will speak to us, you will touch our hearts, and by the end of the sermon, we know that we will not be the same because we know your words, Lord, they changed us. Your words strengthens us, and your words, Father, gives us hope. Speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, I'm so happy to be able to share with you God's words this evening. And the title of this, this evening's sermon is, Take Joy in the God of Your Salvation. The scripture is taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17, all the way to verse 19. The book of Habakkuk was written by the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk was one of the prophets in the Old Testament. And back in those days, the prophets, their ministry was not always an easy one. They often have to talk to kings and leaders of the country to tell them of the wrong things that are happening, to tell them to repent and to change. And quite often, they weren't popular people. Not many people liked them. But Habakkuk and the other prophets, they knew that they were place in the earth for a purpose and one of the purpose was for them to bring the people back to the Lord and please join me in reading Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19 though the fig tree should not blossom nor fruit be on the vines the produce of the olive falls fail and the yield the field yield no food the flock be cut off from the fold and there be no earth in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high, my high places to the choir master with string instruments. My brothers and my sisters, oftentimes in our lives, we know that things, they don't always go our way. Oftentimes, you don't understand what God's plan is. Perhaps we have prayed, we have done our best, but the result of our prayer or the answer to our prayers is quite different than what we wish it would have been. However, one thing remains the same. And this is one thing that we would like to learn today. From the prophet Habakkuk, we learned that even if things, they don't go our way, we have to keep one thing the same, which is we should always choose to praise the Lord our God. Why is it important to keep praising the Lord, to do what the prophet Habakkuk did, which is to take joy in the Lord God of his salvation? The key is in the word salvation. Because of salvation, the prophet Habakkuk was able to take joy. Because of salvation, we today can take joy. Today, we can be joyful, we can have hope, even when things are tough. Even when things aren't going our way. Even when it seems like things are going downhill in our lives. The truth of the matter is, before we hit tomorrow, before we reach tomorrow, God is already there. Before today became today, God is already there. In the book of Revelation, the Lord Jesus said that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Because we know that our God is the beginning and the end, we should never be discouraged. It's okay to be discouraged for a moment, but never let it last for a lifetime. It's okay to be sad for a moment. It's okay to feel hurt, 
pain, discouragement for a moment, but never let it last too long. I'm not telling us that pain is not real. It is real. We know that. However, we can't dwell on pain forever. We must take joy in the God of our salvation. Verse 19 says, God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Have you ever seen a deer? When a deer runs, it sometimes kind of jumps a bit. And when a person walks, and we can see the springs in their steps, we can see. And we can tell that, wow, that person must be really happy. Or when we are really happy about something, perhaps because one of our friends were successful in his or her own business, or one of our family members had uh, given us a gift, or you had done so well in your test in school, or you had just closed a big deal at the office, or you started a business and it became very successful, whatever it might be, when a person is happy, when a person is joyful, that person will have a spring in their steps. They'd walk like a deer. And have you ever seen a person who felt like they've lost all hope, who is sad? They would walk very heavily. Their footsteps become heavier. And the prophet Habakkuk, when he wrote this book, I can tell you, things were not easy. God's people were threatened with enemies on every side. Countries, kingdoms that wanted to attack God's people. But one thing remained the same. Habakkuk never lost hope. Habakkuk, although he was sad, he did not let his sadness go on for a lifetime. What did he do? He remembered the fact that his God, was powerful, is powerful, and will always be powerful. Today, my brothers and my sisters, never forget that the Bible promised that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says that all scripture is breathed out by God. Every single one of the verses that were written was inspired by God, the Holy Spirit. When we think of God's goodness in our lives, when we count our blessings, when we stay truthful and grateful, knowing that how I feel does not change the fact that God loves me, how I feel does not change the fact that God has a great plan for my future, how I feel does not change the fact that God cares about me. How I feel does not change the fact that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, those who are called according to His purpose. And how we feel does not change the fact that God has promised us a future and a hope. When we decide to stay focused on the facts of life and not on how we feel, we would be able to have is springs in our step. We would be able to run, to walk like the deers. Our feet will be like the deers. Well, today perhaps you feel that you can't find a reason to be grateful. You can't find a reason to be thankful. However, I'd like to encourage you today. Count your blessings. The very fact that you are alive is a blessing. The very fact that you are able to hear and you are able to see, they're also blessings. Count your blessings. Our Lord Jesus promised us that in this world, yes, we will have tribulation. That is suffering and trouble, of course. But His promise is that He has overcome the world. So therefore, all the things that we are facing in this earth, 
every single one of them is not more powerful than the Lord our God and His power. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 6, it says this, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. That is what will happen after Jesus comes to this earth the second time. And that is what is going to happen in heaven. So we know that our end is already victory. Our end, we know for sure, is already a hopeful end. Our end is happiness. But the question is, what should we do in the meantime? How should we live our lives as God's sons and God's daughters in this world? In this world, there are so many discouraging things happening. Friends backstabbing one another, business partners being mean to one another, betraying one another perhaps. Well, I'm not saying that's always what's happening. There are, of course, good friends. There are good business partners, but it's not always the case. However, the fact is, is that as long as we are living in this world, imperfections are there. Troubles are there. They're a part of life. It's something we can't deny, something that we don't like, but one thing never changes, that we can always run to God, turn to the Lord our God, and take joy, be grateful, be joyful, and receive peace, strength, and joy today, not because of how we feel or because of what we have, solely that, but because of the faith, peace, joy, strength that our Lord has given us. His mercy is new every morning, the Bible says. Great is His faithfulness. God is always faithful. Maybe today you feel that there has been, there's been people, there have been people who are not faithful to you. But let me tell you one thing. Our Lord Jesus is always faithful. He loves you very much. And He loves me very much. He loves you so much that He gave His life for you and for me. Today, let us be reminded that we have been given the best gift of all. That is salvation. Salvation in Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verse 16 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17 went on and says this, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. My brothers, my sisters, God loves us so much that He sent Jesus, that we may have life. Let us not just live this life just by existing, meaning just going through the motions, thinking, okay, I'll just live my life as long as I live, I eat, I sleep, I go to work, that's it. But let us have joy in our lives. Let us be grateful every day. Take joy in the God of our salvation. God who has given us eternal life. That is the good news. The good news is today, situations might be tough in your life. Today, you might be facing an illness. Maybe you just received the doctor's report and it doesn't look so good. Or perhaps today, you just went from the bank and you were denied a loan that you wanted so badly to have to start a business. Or perhaps you take a look at the stock market and you've lost quite a bit of money there and you're feeling discouraged. Or perhaps today, you've been working on maybe a ministry and you feel that as of today, it's been many years, you still have not seen the fruit. Uh, growing in the ministry. However, my brothers and my sisters, don't just use our timetable. 
Don't just use our time for everything. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that He has made everything beautiful in its time. Everything and beautiful in whose time that is? It is God's time. Amen? Let us trust our lives into our Lord's hands. Let us believe today that when we, when we hope on the Lord, we will never be disappointed. When we hope on the Lord, even if bad things are happening in our lives, we know that they would not last forever because all things work together for good. Because God has prepared for you and I a future and hope. Let us make a decision like what the prophet Habakkuk did. Though the fig tree should not blossom, he will still rejoice in the Lord his God. Perhaps today, you haven't seen yet changes happening in your life. Perhaps today, you haven't seen your body getting any better yet. Perhaps today, you haven't seen your child serving the Lord or changing his ways of life. Perhaps today, you still haven't seen restoration in the relationships between your family members. Perhaps today, you haven't seen your business going well. Perhaps today, the answer to your prayers have not yet been answered. But yet still, we should take joy in the Lord our God, the God of our salvation. And still, we should praise Him anyway, knowing that salvation comes from the Lord. Victory comes from the Lord. Never forget, my brothers, my sisters, the blessings that we can get in our lives, the healing, the restoration in our family's lives, the salvation that we, we, that we receive. Everything comes from the Lord. The house that we're living in comes from the Lord. The car that we're driving comes from the Lord. The job that you have comes from the Lord. Why is that true? Because the Bible says, the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to whom? Belongs to the Lord, right? Amen. Now, I would like to encourage you today, every day, always read the Bible. How can you take joy in the God of your salvation? You have to remember His promises. Remember His kindness. Remember what He has done in the past for you. And remember of the things that He will do in the future for your lives. Today, count His blessings. Today, stay encouraged. Be encouraged. No matter how you feel today, decide and say it out loud. I will rejoice in the Lord God of my salvation. Decide today to live with hope. Decide today to never give up. Decide today to read the Bible every day. Decide today to pray to the Lord when times get tough. Decide today to come to church and praise the Lord anyway. Decide today to still give your offering to the Lord even when things are tough. And give with a cheerful heart. And of course, praise the Lord with a cheerful heart. Perhaps as you're praising the Lord or singing to the Lord, you feel hurt and pain in your heart. But never give up, knowing that when you give a sacrifice, that is your heart. That is your song to the Lord. The Lord sees that and will reward you for it. The Bible says, He rewards those who diligently seek Him. And I know we are those people who are diligently serving the Lord, seeking His face. Amen? Stay joyful in the Lord God of your salvation. Never forget that our life in this earth is temporary, meaning the problems you face, they're all temporary. But we know one thing is certain, that God is eternal. His power is all-powerful. And I would like to close with this in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's not impossible. Everything is possible with God. Would you pray this prayer with me? If you've never received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, decide today to receive Him. And if you would like to have a prayer as well for 
things that maybe you are going through right now, an illness that you are facing, I would like to pray for you also. I would first pray the salvation prayer and secondly pray for healing for your prayer requests as well. Because we know, as the Bible says in the book of James, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I'm about to pray right now, Lord, for those who have never received you, O Lord, as their Lord and Savior. I would first pray the salvation prayer. If, you've, if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Oh, Lord, my God. Secondly, God, I would like to pray for those who have struggles, illness, Father, or if they're going through tough times right now. I would like to pray in your name, Jesus. Father, I am praying for anyone who are listening to this program, Lord. Those who are sick, Father. We know, Lord, by your wounds we are, we are healed, Father. And by your wounds, Father, we are healed. And we know, Father, right now, God, as we pray, Father, may healing flow. And Father, I pray for anyone who's feeling hopeless, Father. May they be strengthened by your promises, Father. And right now, God, if there's somebody, Lord, who's going through a tough times, they feel, Lord, that trouble has been happening in their lives. They feel, Father, that life is getting tougher and tougher. Lord God, give them peace, strength, and joy. And Father God, right now, as we humble ourselves before you, we know, God, that nothing is impossible for you. All things are possible, Lord. And with that, Father, we lift up our prayers into your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters.